Hello, my friends. This is part two in a series of videos on the meaning of palace. And what we were saying in part one is that the essential function of palace is to bring our inner talents, these God-given gifts, these very precious and you might say delicate things that we have because they can easily be destroyed by trauma, by, you know, by hunger, by violence, all kinds of things can, can wreck them. We need to preserve, develop, and, and delicately bring them out and join them with the world. And palace, you might say its first impression feels maternal, but there's also a paternal feeling to it as well. The, it's like the first flavor you get is maternal, and then it comes through with a paternal. Let me explain what I mean by this. It's a biological fact that babies are born from women. Okay, that's where babies come from. Their mothers give birth to them. Prior to birth, and at birth, so when the baby is in the womb, when the baby is born, is it closer to the father or is it closer to the mother? It's closer to the mother. So the baby is more closely connected to the mother than the father. Who is initially going to guide the baby right from the moment of birth? Well, we hope the father is there. We hope that he's supportive. But the mother is the first contact. So the mother is the first source of guidance. She's the first person to help guide, connect, and to help guide the child to independence. Taking the baby, helping it grow, guiding it to become fully functioning requires a tremendous amount of strength, ingenuity, resourcefulness, intelligence, creativity, practicality, and a delicate balance of attachment and detachment. Because we need bonding. Without bonding, there's big problems. But if the bonding is too much, it's like smothering, mothering, <laughs> smothering love, it's not going to help the baby fly. This is, Pallas is involved in all this because Pallas it's not about the whole maternal process. It's not about all of that. It's just about recognizing what's inside this child. What's cooking in there? What inspiration? What muses are speaking to this child? Everybody's connecting to different muses. The muse of art, the muse of science. Which ones? In what way? Powers is interested in finding that caring for it, developing it, and bringing it out. And the mother has the first connection to this. So initially, there's this sense of palace very connected to women as the primary people that you might say channel palace. That's the environment. Every planetary force operates in particular environments. And the first and most obvious environment, the proper venue, the proper stage where palace operates is with women. But we're going to see it operates in a very important way through men as well. Not the first, but you might say the second impact or, or way that palace operates. And here's where we'll look at the paternal side of it is, amazingly, there's a connection between some of the mythology about Pallas Athena and the meaning. So in mythology, I quoted this from a website, Athena was born from Zeus after he experienced an enormous headache, and she sprang fully grown and in armor from his forehead. So... Pallas Athena, instead of being born from a mother, is born from the father's head, and she's fully formed, and she's even dressed and wearing armor. And this is the feeling, amazingly, 
capture some of the feeling of the asteroid palace. Not that what's so obvious. Oh, it's a female warrior type. Mm, not really. No, it's not a. It's more specific than that. This being fully formed from the head of Zeus is the fully formed gift that you have, that I have, that all of us have. That gift, that talent. What the myth is saying is that we are born with these. So let, let me read what I have here because it explains it. Amazingly, the myth makes sense. A child has talents that cannot be explained by the theory of behavior psychologists that they are born with a blank slate mind. You familiar with this theory? B.F. Skinner headed the, the behaviors movement, and they said you have this blank slate mind. You know, you're just born blank. <laughs> and then your environment and your experiences develop and your world develops. Well, that's simply not true. <laughs> it, it's not true. We come into life already gifted. I think most parents see this, even if they don't have any sense of astrology or anything else. The children are so different. They exhibit qualities. And you see these children, four or five years old, speaking multiple languages or playing instruments. They, they come in with different gifts and talents. We are born, in some sense, fully developed. Well, not really. It's an exaggeration. But the circuitry is already in place. And what this myth is emphasizing is you have it. And you're, and you're charged and ready to go. You need the help of the parents and others to really help you because it's not completely true. You're extremely vulnerable. You're not really born as an adult. It's an exaggeration. But what this myth is emphasizing is that you are not born with a blank slate mind or blank slate feelings. You have all of these instructions, like an acorn that has all the instructions in it to become an, you know, a, a tree. So, a child has talents that cannot be explained by the theory of behavior of psychologists who believe we are born with a blank slate mind. Pallas Athena springs forth fully grown. The child's gifts and the gifts of adults too. You know, we often talk about children with Pallas, but we're all children. We all have new, fresh, innocent, pure things that we're becoming aware of. So, the child's gifts are pure and the potential depth of them needs to be fully unlocked. In mythology, Pallas is a warrior goddess, but the asteroid Pallas has a much more subtle warrior quality. Pallas, the asteroid Pallas, is not some fierce, strong warrior. Our research does not agree with that. It, Pallas inclines a person to be quiet, just the opposite. Very humble, not very aggressive. The aggressiveness is an inner quality. You don't see it. It's their, you might say, commitment, their devotion to bring out your precious, divinely given gifts. And they are fierce about that. But you don't see any fierceness. They're not pushy. They're not aggressive. They're not... They're not coming out with a sword. They're gently bringing the world, and the social world, and your personal world into what they hope will become a beautiful integration. Through a lot of work, it's almost never easy. A lot of thought, a lot of care, a lot of sensitivity. And Pallas's approach is actually not to fight. What's that going to accomplish? Nothing. It's to bring two good sides together. Society is good. People have divinely given gifts. And that being born from the head of Zeus is saying, this is divine. This is from the head of a god. You, we're all Athena. We are all 
Pallas Athena. God's got a headache. <laughs> and boom, those special and precious things in you, in me, in everyone are all fully formed and ready to go. And the armor, ready to take charge. But the actual process is not aggressive. It's delicate, sensitive, and quiet. We're going to see that when we look at the charts, when we look at the results of the research. So there's some ways in which the myth completely throws off your understanding. And yet, in a more uh, subtle way, the myth is true. The armor is true in that the person is with the strong powers is going you to say you might say fight dedicate themselves to bring out these precious talents but it is not a aggressive process so the the myth has some um, deep truth to it which is an amazing coincidence i guess but it can more likely throw you off and because you the tendency to take it literally okay um, there is strength, sensitivity, and wisdom in the process of the astrological interpretation given earlier. It does have some elements of truth in, you know, the, what's commonly said. Some astrologers say that palace indicates a strong connection of the daughter and father. Hmm. So astrologers are saying that if a, uh, a baby girl has palace very strong in her chart, it's conjunct the sun like almost exact, within minutes, or conjunct the ascendant within minutes, or, or the moon, or whatever. It's very strong. That would make it strong. There may be other things that make it strong, but in vibrational astrology that I do, that's the most obvious thing. Palace will be strong if it's conjunct your, say, say it's conjunct your sun with one or two or three minute orb. Your sun is saturated with palace energy into very, very high frequencies when that orb is very, very tiny. So it's going to color your life. And what they're saying is that a girl born with a strong palace often develops a strong relationship with the father, a strong connection between that daughter and her father. Is there any truth to this? Well, I've done some observations through our, you know, of our research and, and looked at, you know, just applying it with people. And it's an excellent observation. It's actually very often true that a female with powers conjunct an inner planet with a very small orb, not always, but very often, more often than, than average, I think, has a kind of special bond and respect with the father. Now, why, what's going on there? Is that because of the myth and hmm, she was born out of the head of the father? No. In vibrational astrology, we don't think there's these kind of mystical stories that just happen to, mystical and mythical <laughs> stories that just uh, occur because they do. It's because of the process. The process is that if a girl has a strong palace in her chart, she is, or a boy, but here we're talking about a, a girl and her, and her father, that child with strong palace is very concerned about the precious talents and gifts and how they will be brought into the world. And just by the things that child says and the things they do, and it's not only for yourself. A person with powers that strong becomes highly attuned to this. They're often going to make reference to some talent, like, oh, my sister, ha she does this so well, and they're hoping it will get encouraged and developing. They're noticing the process of palace. You're attuned to palace. And so when you see that in the child, the parents of course, observe it, and they say, oh, she's concerned about her talents, and they will respond. So the child says, oh, I really like to paint. I wonder if I could be a painter someday. This concern about what is my talent? How do I bring it out? 
What is your talent? How do you bring it out? And the parents are going to say, oh, she's concerned about her talents and how she'll be able to bring them out. Let's encourage her. Let's develop it. So, um, what happens if you have a strong palace, conduct your sun or moon, you're interested in helping people find, discover, develop, and circulate, bring out into the world their talents. Palace inclines good parenting. People with strong palace in their chart are tend to be good parents to, to the extent that they're interested in their child's potential and the potential of all people. So palace inclines women to be strong mothers, and it inclines men to be caring fathers. So a, a woman who has palace very strong is going to do the same thing the father does. They're going to be encouraging their children, like, what are your talents? Oh, you've got musical talent. Let's give you music lessons. But that wisdom, that sensitivity, that caution... <clears throat> To, to look at what's going on in the world, what's going on with the person, and trying to delicately bring them together often inclines a person with strong powers to not force or take sides, but to delicately help it work. It's a beautiful thing. It's what makes life work. It's what helps people grow up, become independent, become creative people. So... When it works well, the, the children appreciate it. Now, what happens here is that, uh, let me skip over to this sentence here on the slide. In cultures where more pressure has been placed on boys to bring their talents into expression than for girls to do this, right? We might notice the boy, oh, he has athletic talent, you know, you know. There's been more emphasis, well, the, the women will just be at home, the men will go out, they have to develop their talents. Well, even though that has largely changed, or we hope it has changed, it's such a wonderful feeling when it's over and the girl feels just like the boys. I'm getting the same encouragement, the same interest, the same support that I would if I was what? No difference because palace has this sense of, you might say, equality, that all of it's needed. So the mother and the father are listening and supporting. And the way that the father does that for the daughter is something special because it has gone beyond the historical deficiencies, we could say, that a strong palace tends to build this. So both the mother are encouraging, but in the case where historically men have got, boys have gotten more encouragement to bring out their talents, it's especially beautiful to see a girl bringing out her talents and the male parent being such a big help, being such a cheerleader, being so interested, taking every step. Of course, the mom is doing it too, but that's special because we still have a historical tendency against it. I think what it is, the reason these daughters are connecting so strong with the father is because it's just a very special, refreshing new thing in relatively new when you look at the totality of human experience over many hundreds or thousands of years. So, uh, in cultures where more pressure has been placed on boys to bring their talents into expression than for girls to do this, the parents usually can feel in their daughter, who has strong powers, her need to develop and bring her talents into the world. Having the active support of the father is likely as long as the father is not extremely insensitive and emotionally undeveloped. So, if the father is halfway healthy emotionally and psychologically, he sees the daughter wanting to develop these talents, concerned about it, he's going to jump in and help, as is the mother. Okay. So palace, now here's another thing about palace. 
Palace is subtle. We're going to see this. It's subtle in that when a parent takes their children to different events, when they're doing all these things and listening and assisting, it's it's just day to day, little by little building things. And Pallas, you might say, is humble, simple about it. So there's nothing flashy about Pallas, as opposed to the myth saying, oh, here she comes, Pallas Athena, sword in hand, armor, bam. Actually, no. Pallas is really not so obvious because they're interested not in the effects. They're interested in, you might say, that inner quality, something precious. There's a lot of concern to make sure that it it's brought out. So Pallas, the way Pallas works, it can be very attractive in a subtle way. For example, a man who is a good, caring father, Pallas, interested in their children's talents, listening to them, not forcing something, trying to be sensitive, using a more holistic and sensitive approach to bring it together, it's so fantastic. I mean, who doesn't want to have, you know, what person wouldn't want to have a husband like that? What child wouldn't want to have a father like that? It's very attractive in a different way from a man who might be more physically handsome, more charismatic. Pallas is not charismatic. It tends to have negative charisma. <laughs> They're too busy caring, taking care of things to be shining and glamorous. So can you feel that? To have a father or a husband who's not flashy, maybe not as handsome, maybe not as even talented, maybe you know, just seems like an average sort of guy, but he's there listening. He's there making things work. He's there looking for those opportunities. And a woman who is similar thing, you know, that she's doing the same thing, caring, listening, attentive to the child's needs, competent, involved in guiding, protecting, and directing. This is what Pallas does. It's guiding, protecting, and directing. Directing in a subtle way, not like, oh, you better, you know, you have such a gift. You need to, you know, use your gift. It's, it doesn't talk like that. It tries to draw it out, develop it, integrate it into life. It's very attractive in a different way from a more physically beautiful, stunning, or charismatic woman. So, it's true for both, you know, both genders. There's a subtlety of beauty there. Now, let's look at the research. You've got the idea of what Pallas does. Let's look at the research. Here's what we did, very simple. And uh, Faye Cochran did a lot of the work on this. She, and uh, I, I worked with her, and she presented these results at one of the previous vibrational astrology conferences. I've added a lot more stuff, a lot more background, and, you know, over time we understand things better, we apply it, we're looking at things, so I'm making these videos here for the YouTube members, building on what was found. But this original research was extremely simple, this original research on, um, on Pallas. And it was a revelation because the results were so clear. And as we use it, it's clear. It's just, wow, there it is. When you use it with your clients, it's so helpful. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, so what we did is very simple. We just, we went into the Sirius software. We did an astro signature. And all we did is Sun Conjunct Palace. Who has Sun Conjunct Palace? <clears throat> with the smallest orb. That's it. Because if you, it, like I, I said this before, if you have Sun Conjunct Pallas, I don't know if I said it in the first video in the series or this one, if, if you have Sun Conjunct Pallas with a one minute or two minute, even a three minute orb, you go into those vibrational charts, like if you go into the 16 vibration chart, the orb becomes 16 times bigger. 16 times three is still less than one degree. It's still tight in all these charts. Everything the sun does, if it makes a trine to this, a square to this, 
likelihood is that Pallas is close enough, even when it spreads far away from the sun with higher vibrations, still re reasonably close. It's toning everything the sun does in all the lower vibrations and then even into the high ones. So it's pervading the person's life. It's got to be evident. It's not the only way the sun, I mean, that palace can be strong, but it's one of the ways. It, so it's very simple. If you have sun conjunct an asteroid, if your sun is conjunct Ceres or Pallas or Juno or you know, Interomnia or anything else, with a one minute or two minute orb, now even if it's over a degree, well, it's strong, but it doesn't necessarily pervade into your life. When the orbs get really, really, really tiny, oh my God, according to vibrational astrology, it's just extreme. It's just like really clear. It still may not be the most conspicuous thing in your life because whatever aspect pattern is going on, but it should be clear. It should be obvious. You should be able to see it. And the three people of Sun Conjunct Palace with the smallest orb is a lady named Ventura Alonso, a fellow who's a Polish name. I'm not even going to attempt to say his first name. In English, I guess it would be Eugene Ibish. I'm pretty sure is how you would say the last name. And a third fellow, Furman Gemier. These are the three. We look at their lives. We see what's going on and what's happening. And we're going to look at them in this order. Uh, Vin Ventura, Alonzo, uh, Ibish, Alonzo, Ibish, and Gemier. But I'm going to give you a heads up. It's going to be the second one, uh, Ibish. That's going to be particularly interesting. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop here because we are at 27 minutes. I'm going to pick up with this slide in part three. And we'll start looking at the three charts starting with Ventura Alonzo. Okay, thank you very much for listening, my friends. I will see you in part three. God bless. Namaste.